Dante Wright. Clouds back in the picture today with a little rain. I'll let you know how your weekend is shaping up. Then they're dropping an album and they're not even out of high school. Stuck in this city, you feel like a maze. The program that's giving them a voice that's needed more than ever in the Twin Cities. It's Friday, April 23rd. Care 11 Sunrise starts now. Grab that umbrella before you head out the door this morning, Sunrisers. We are waking up to rain in parts of the metro. We have Mobile 11 right here out on the roads. And you can see the roads are huh, pretty wet and the windshield wipers are going. And then take a look at radar here. Yeah, there's green and that means rain. It looks like it's sticking around for a little bit. All right, so we've established rain is coming down. Alicia's tracking the roads this morning. And Fact. Guy, following that system, can we call it a storm or? <laughs> Wait, which one? Right now? <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, the stuff that's going on now, like, is it uh, going to be a storm? No, it's not a storm. All right, that's what, <laughs> what I mean. What like, I didn't know. <laughs> no, 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 we're not dealing with a storm. Uh, you know, just a little disturbance with some light rain at this time. And uh, already by about 11 a.m. or so, things dramatically slow down. And you'll see clouds mainly being the story today with temperatures cooler than yesterday. Take a look at radar. You can see light precip as you can take a look at your legend here. Green indicating light, not really picking up on anything else besides light rain and you can see almost on the tail end as this uh, swath of light rain will just continue pushing off to the north and east. So light rain drizzle throughout the morning hours. Still wet pavement though. A few hundredths of an inch expected so not much. Another cold front pushes through overnight uh, into early Saturday and I'll let you know when our next chance of rain. I'll time all that out coming up here in a bit. And just keep an eye on uh, someone dealing with some car troubles, unfortunately, to start their Friday morning commute along 61 at Lower Afton Road over in the Eastern Metro, blocking that left shoulder, not causing slowdowns. As you can see, traffic's moving along nicely there. Around the 694-494 loop, no crashes, which is great news. But again, big week in closure for folks in the Brooklyn Center area once again, except this time 94 eastbound will be closed. I'll have more details on that and detour information coming up in just a few minutes. All right, look forward to those details. Thanks, Alicia. The future of Johnson & Johnson's COVID vaccine is now in the hands of the CDC. CDC advisors will be meeting today and will possibly vote on updating recommendations for using the one dose vaccine. The vaccine was put on pause after six women out of nearly 7 million people who got that shot developed rare and severe blood clotting. And this morning, we're tracking new COVID guidelines that have direct impact on your kids if they play sports. Yeah, Kaya Edwards is live with everything you need to know. Kaya. Well, the Minnesota Department of Health says student athletes can now play outdoor sports without wearing a face mask. But they still need to wear a mask anytime they're not actively playing. Health officials also recommend athletes get tested for COVID once a week. And they recommend bi-weekly testing for all middle and high school students, regardless of their involvement in extracurricular activities. To achieve this, the state plans to provide schools with free saliva test kits beginning Monday. As a parent, this, this gives me hope for Minnesota. I'm so happy it happened. I, mean, I think everybody's kind of relaxed to be without them and the kids that want to wear them do wear them. The health department also recommends getting tested weekly for anyone who plays an outdoor sport, including adults. All right, Kaya, thank you for that. And this decision affects so many families across the state. So we want to know what you think of it. All you have to do is text us 763-797-7215. This morning, we're hearing from an alternate juror in the Derek Chauvin trial. Yeah, she was released right before deliberations started, so she didn't have any say in the verdict, but she was ready to vote if needed. When he turned and said number 96, you're an alternate. Yeah, my heart, heart broke a little bit. Would you have voted guilty or not guilty? I would have said guilty. We will hear what convinced her that Chauvin is guilty at 630. Yeah, no. Comes as the community's mourning the loss of Dante Wright. He's the young man from Brooklyn Center who was shot and killed by a police officer who says she mistakenly pulled her gun instead of her taser. At Wright's funeral yesterday, his loved ones spent the day remembering him, talking about his past and hoping for change in the future. The celebration of life came with a lot of emotion. Family and friends mourned a son, a brother, and a new father to a baby boy. Katie Wright remembered her son's smile. His father was at a loss for words. Oh, my son had a smile that was worth a million dollars. When he walked in the room, he lit up the room. He was a brother, a jokester, 
He was loved by so many. He's going to be so missed. And Wright was honored with musical performances and a live painting slowly revealing his face. Other speakers like family attorney Ben Crump and the Reverend Al Sharpton linking his death to the larger fight for police reform. The legacy in the court of jurisprudence will be how did Officer Potter see Dante Wright? But more importantly, how does America see our children? God has turned the page in the state of Minnesota, and we're never going back no more. The 20 year old's funeral drew people from across the country, including some of Minnesota's elected officials, civil rights leaders, and the families of others killed by police. Now, Dante Wright's parents also received a proclamation from Governor Tim Walls, who acknowledged Wright's death is part of a nationwide problem. Other lawmakers, though, calling for change as well. Minnesota Senator Amy Klobuchar tweeted in part, it's time to move forward on federal police reform. It's time to pass the George Floyd Justice in Policing Act. It was a uh, yeah another emotional day you guys here in the Twin Cities Metro. Mm, yeah. A lot of emotion, a lot yeah. of call for change yesterday as well. For sure, Alicia, thanks. Well, the former officer charged in Wright's death is out on bond. Kim Potter fired her gun when trying to arrest him during a traffic stop. She is charged with second degree manslaughter. Here's some other top stories in your morning rush. Police on the hunt this morning for a person who shot and killed a man in South Minneapolis. Police tell us it happened near 22nd in Oakland, about a block from PB Field Park. They think the victim and shooter knew each other. No arrests have been made. This is the 21st homicide in Minneapolis this year. The search is on in Houston for someone who defaced a mural of George Floyd with racist graffiti. It popped up early Thursday morning, two days after the Derek Chauvin verdict was announced. The artist behind the mural has already covered the graffiti. The mural is just a few miles from where George Floyd grew up. It's the end of an era in St. Louis Park. The iconic Roller Garden will close May 8th. It's been owned by the same family for 52 years. The old owners say the pandemic pushed them to retire. The new owners are turning the place into a gymnastics center. And a St. Paul dad had to play midwife this week. He delivered his new daughter in his living room. Parents Allison and Billy Kane planned a home delivery, but not like this. A midwife showed up about 10 minutes late after baby Sheila was born. Both mom and newborn are healthy and happy. And that's your Friday Morning Rush. Guy, what's our one thing weather? Yeah, you know, things are going to be a little wet this morning. Otherwise, cloudy skies with highs today in the low to mid 50s. Yeah, just watching a person have car trouble. But what I love, the, the formerly known as highway helpers, they just helped him uh, fix his car a little bit and they're pulling aside. This is 61 Lower Afton Road. Nice to see people helping each other out uh, when they're dealing with some troubles. No other crashes, no delays. Again, I'll be talking about that weekend closure coming up. Well, a new report in Minnesota says COVID-19 is negatively and disproportionately impacting Asian Minnesotans. The study says overall, Asian Minnesotans make up 5% of the population, but they represent 6% of all COVID-19 hospitalizations and 8% of ICU cases. It says when data is disaggregated, the Hmong, Karen, and Karini are more impacted than other Asian ethnic groups. The report says there needs to be more specific data to reduce health disparities. And, you know, these groups have been asking this about this for a while from the state. Well, if you're ready to kick off summer with a vac vacation, you're not alone. The budget-friendly locations to put on your list. And giving Twin Cities teens a chance to be heard. We hear the brand new uh, music that is needed now more than ever. And if your car has damage from a pothole, we've got tips on how to get the state to pay for your repairs.